Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Top Hat Chat with myself, Street, and the Top Hat Gaming Man. Indeed, I am the Top Hat Gaming Man and we are live on YouTube. We are, yeah. Indeed. Um, and our exciting topic for today, I use the word exciting fairly loosely I suppose, um, is, uh, is game collecting worse than piracy? Mm. It's a very interesting and topical yeah. question indeed. In fact, it's so interesting and topical that anyone who is currently watching, who is in the chat box on this live chat, wants to get involved, then feel free to put your opinions down and we'll bring some of them up throughout this discussion. Yeah. Because I feel this is such a broad topic that it needs more than just for two of us to discuss it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and actually, the first comment that we've got from anybody is actually from Dan Ibbotson from Slope. Game room. So, hello to you. You might have some input into this as well. So, yes, although, thank you for being um, here, Mr. Hibbertson. Um, you've made a little bit of a error here because you've wrote, "I'm early for once," when really you're supposed to write first. Yeah, you are. If, supposed if, you, to write if, you, first. if you're the first one here, you have to write first. That is the rule of the internet. Yeah, that is exactly right. Mm. So, um, unlucky, but, but yes, maybe we, you can be the first commenter. Mm. But speaking of rules. I personally don't care for them, do you? <laughs> um, no, actually. Um, and it's probably because at one time, as a child, I was definitely into my rules. Uh, rules were important. They provided structure and order to my world. Um, and then, of course, I discovered that I could chip my PS1. And all that went out the window because I could have hundreds and hundreds of games. Yeah, and um, would rules really be there if they was not made to be broken? Exactly. Exactly. Um, but we're not going to be talking about that as such, or not quite yet. We're going to start off by talking about piracy in a more retro sense. Yes, because obviously anyone who pirates new modern games will have just come on the market. That is obviously very, very bad. That's bad for the industry because these that's new games coming out where um, that's very damaging. That's yeah. not part of the discussion, really. This is all about retro gaming. So what is worse? Pirating retro games that make absolutely um, no money at all anymore or are not even on the market that often or um, buying retro games for large sums of money. Which of those activities is extracting away more money directly from the modern gaming industry? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a relatively interesting topic and it's definitely one to talk about. Um, one thing I do think is considerably worse than those things is being late. Yes, I'm not one to tolerate lateness. Hmm. I always turn up to work on time. Talking about being late. Hi. You right, all? Yeah. <laughs> you okay? Yes, yeah, I'm fine. Welcome along. <laughs> Come and join. Come and join. Um, we are discussing a very important topic. Yes. Um, so I heard. And it's not a chocolate bar for a change. Yes. Oh, what? Topic. Oh. So we are complete. Good. I've just caught there on we go. Just... <laughs> so for anybody that's just finding our channel, this is our third member of the sofa. This is Orb, um, and he is going to be here to discuss the same thing so, as we yes, just talked about. The talk point is, what is more damaging to the modern gaming industry? Is it retro gaming collectors who fork out large sums of money on second-hand games for like £500 a pop? Or... Is it people who pirate retro games so they download them and pay absolutely nothing for them? What damages the industry more? Arguably, the people who pay for more money. Mm. Yeah. See, yeah. this is kind of the point that we were getting at. Because the money sort of stays within that sector, so it doesn't support anything else. Whereas I think the natural advertisement that is getting a game for free uh, is a better thing because it keeps interest in those games alive. Yeah. Whereas... Who's going to fork out? See, I was a big collector once until I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> but um, with regards to that, I always kind of took pride in the fact that I was getting on in the world of gaming, and but at the same time not giving any money to corporations. I actively was going out of my way, in a sense, to not pay £60 a pop to um, a huge corporation. Well, yeah, because... Screw the corporation. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, that's proof right. that it was more damaging yeah. because I actively knew I was hurting the corp. The corp but they by... can handle it. Like They can, I mean? exactly. They, they can, can take in, in small amounts. But I'm saying, for something I was doing, for example, surely that was creating a bigger hit to them than someone just going on uh, the internet and downloading a few Nintendo ROMs. Yeah. Because yeah. I've yeah. I'm actually got big sums of money which I'm not putting back 
in the modern pot instead, just giving it to some scumbag selling a second hand game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is pretty bad. I mean, at the end of the day, by buying these collector's items, which is what they are essentially, with how far emulation has come, you're just lining the pockets of the, in your own words, scummy Jimmy Savile resellers. Yes, the middlemen. Yeah. And no one likes middlemen in this no, world. No. Um, well, especially late ones. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, game collecting does do some things that I think that we do need to talk about that I think that we haven't done yet. And, um, and that is that kind of game collecting in itself, I mean, you have a lot of people, for example, yourself, um, who have created YouTube channels out of their collections. Yes. yes. Uh, other people, such as Metal Jesus um, and other such collectors... Um, have created a buzz around gaming yes. and have introduced people to not just retro gaming but also more current titles as well. Mainly retro, but have brought people into gaming, which is obviously going to then drive it up a little bit and, and I cause also more think sales. There's also a lot of almost unintentional corruption with regards to the whole thing. Um, yeah. There is like um, myths perpetuated by both sellers and collectors alike regarding playing games on original hardware using original software. Yeah. Like they've created this mythos, like you only get the best experience if you're playing on the original hardware using the original game, which yes. personally, and this is kind of from somebody who owns a lot of games, it's complete rubbish. Yeah. The original hardware, sometimes that can be a better option because you're feeling the actual real controls, etc. You're playing it on a CRT, so it's got its, got its upsides. But at the same time, it has an equal amount of negative sides to it like you haven't got a HDMI output nope. on many of the original devices nope. secondly those devices do not have um, a digital factor to them normally nope. so therefore you can't store all your games digitally instead you've just got to house a huge collection like I'm doing now that's not necessarily a good thing mm. I mean, so there's I agree, a lot of negatives to it. Yeah, I mean, you've always been a bit of a naysayer about digital versions of media, um, whereas Orb has always kind of been one of these people that actually quite likes the digital format. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of your games collection is digital. Um, yeah, probably nowadays. Yeah. It, it's sort of vastly digital, uh, thanks to Steam and, yeah. and things like Xbox Live Marketplace yeah. and things. But it's just because it saves space. Sometimes you don't want to wait for yeah. the item, so you just want to get it straight away. That's cool if you don't mind taking a small financial hit on that, and it's yeah. not really much at all. Yeah. If sales are great, you get way better sales on digital content than you do on physical media. That's that's just the fact. Unless the game bombs, and then you can pick it up for next to nothing. Like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, that was worth next to nothing um, if you went into game, for example, to actually buy it. Um, compared to if you bought it online for the first few weeks. True. Yeah, yeah. you will get so stung there are exceptions, every now and then. But you will get stung every now and then. But come on, we've all paid over. We've all paid top whack for games that are just yeah awful. Yes. If to be honest, if I want to make a purchase, I've always gone the physical route because I like the option of having a physical item I can resell. And secondly, because I know it's physically there. I'm always going to be able to play it in theory because it's physically manifested yep. as a, an, an object like this is gaming manifest. Whereas um, with digital uh, purchases, I've never really been comfortable making them. However, that's where um, playing really old games via emulation is different because you're not physically paying for that mm -hmm. because they've made the money already back in the past. You're... you're um, essentially downloading a product which is te in all technicalities um, past its sell by date and out of service it'd be like technically buying a rotten apple playing an eight buying an eight bit game well, because it's... that's not what a game should look like or play like today if one of the things out of curiosity one of the things that's changed your mind because obviously you are kind of slowly converting over um, is it the fact that actually now you are getting some games that aren't actually on the cartridge even though you're buying a cartridge for example, was it the first Crash title? The disc of that only came with oh, the first one, and then you had to download saying. the extra half. Yeah, I'm not impressed with the way um, modern huts, the yeah. physicals are presented whatsoever. Also, games tend to be pushed out for their release date, and sometimes are practically unplayable in that form until they've had three or four patches. But as you're aware, I pretty much own next to no PS4 or Xbox One games for, for yeah. that very reason. Yeah. I think you need to look at the facts as well, that modern one physical... Um, media 
that they release for games it's usually actually quite poor quality whereas back you only have to go back a certain number of years and it was of a much better quality look yeah. at the cases that you get Xbox One games in and Switch games and PS4 games they're flimsy yeah. they're horrible there's no manual they're, they're built all wrong like the Switch case you had this big old case and then it uses this much yeah. for the game yeah. On and then like Xbox One decided to be lame and go how could we be different well we're going to put our disc spindle on the left hand side of yeah, the box that's completely sort of, stupid so what was well, there any need for that like I'm pretty sure my first Xbox One title I ever opened I opened up and went there's no disc in here because you do immediately look for the disc don't you mm. and the disc art so Which, again does. is another reason to collect isn't it downloading yeah. and pirating completely out of print games that aren't available for sale anywhere does that hurt anyone at all if you can't buy it no I so can't how see come it. there is such a huge amount of people who are comment on this video say no it's really bad because it's illegal and that's their only reasoning because it's illegal um that's just like a moral that's moral grandstanding but is that yay but how can just because something is illegal be wrong because you should be able to challenge everything that's, well, of course that's, yeah, like um, smoking marijuana is illegal. Mm. I'm very against it. But half of America has now said it's fine. Yeah, and but the government still says it's not fine. So you can it's be in a yeah. state where it's legal, doing legal things, and then f like federal yeah. police can go, no, we're going to arrest you now. And it's like, no, but my state said it was fine. Yeah. And they're like, we what don't say it's okay. Anyway, diverting a little bit. Yeah. But what I'm saying is... is that's, you know, that's a I thing. actually procured these in the last few days. They um, are physical pirate games. These are actually amazing. So they're both. This is one of my favourite things ever. So do you just want to quickly give those a little read? So we have Dragon Force 2. Yeah, that's Ready? a Sega game. Sega Saturn game. Show yeah. them to the camera. I'll show them as they go. I'll pass them up. Yeah. I'll hold them up. Uh, uh, police notes. Yeah. The open police notes. That uh, feels heavy. Oh, it's got a manual and a flip. Wow, three discs, no manual. Yeah. So basically, these are pirate games of um, Japanese Sega Saturn games, what were never released in the West with English fan translations attached to them. That's and they, amazing. they cost me about five pounds each. That's a bargain. Yeah. Some of them are of good quality. Like, so this is just a DVD case, but like those ones actually feel of good quality. Like, and the box art's pretty good as well. But by me buying yeah. these, I'm not damaging anyone because these games have not been sold in the West altogether. And when they were sold in Japan, it was over 20 years ago. How could that be considered wrong by anyone? Yeah, this is uh, bizarre. So this is a game, Shining Force 3, with three scenarios over three separate Well, that's games. kind of like Final Fantasy games. X, if they're different games, like Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X 2. It's basically Shining Force, Shining Force 3, sorry, Shining Force 3, Shining Force 3, 2, and Shining Force 3, 3. You understand? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, these things are absolutely amazing. And when you said you were going to be getting fan translation games, I had no idea of the quality that you were going to receive. I, to be honest, I don't think you did either. No, yeah, they're really cool. Because these will sit up on that shelf and won't look out of place. No, not at, at all. all. Um, and, you know, the person that sold those, £5 each. Is what you bought yeah. those for? Yeah, five pounds and, and, each. Yeah, it's hard to even see how you turn the profit on that when yeah. you consider the, the work was being put into making yeah. those. I mean, there's a really, really decent chance that he is literally doing this for the love of Saturn. Yes, and um, by looking at the envelope it came in, the the, the man who um, is creating them um, has quite a high power professional job as yeah. well, away from piracy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So these these weren't these didn't come from Somalia. No, no, no. not at all. That's really good because we all know that's where all the pirates come from. Going back to the point previously, though, an example of this using the pseudo Saturn, uh, the cartridge, what allows me to play. We haven't spoken about the pseudo Saturn at all. Okay. Do you want to quickly explain, just it's in case? This it is a cartridge you put into the top of the Sega Saturn. It allows you to play CDR backups, so I can play. Yeah. Go straight on the internet and download any Sega Saturn game and play them straight away. And that's um, not the only thing it does either, is it? It also makes the console completely region free. It does, yes. And allows yeah. me to play things like these fan translations and stuff like that. Yeah. But further to this as well, um, what's more ethically wrong? Paying someone who has no part in developing Panzer Dragoon Saga £400 for their copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga 
or spending 80 pence on some CDRs than using that 400 pounds from Sega products. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we should, it's ethically right to pirate these retro games because they're out of print and then yeah. you've got that money free to give to the original developers yeah. anyway. That's not the Which only is where thing I'd be spending my money a lot of the time if I wasn't buying retro games I'd be buying new games. Yeah, I mean there's, there's a few things as well that I think we need to talk about um, and, or I think you'll probably have some awareness of this as well. Obviously you have these um, uh, people online that restore cartridges and games from cartridges and stuff like that. Um, I've seen a few videos about those I'm sure you guys have as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, cartridges rotting over time through poor storage is a legitimate problem. <coughs> CD right? disc rot's even worse. This is what I was going to say. Disc rot. You've spoken about disc rot. Disc rot is something that I think was probably um, highlighted by I think it was Metal Jesus actually, um, or at least the first time that I've really spoken uh, or heard anybody speak about it. Um, obviously, it's a bit too early to see any of that myself. I mean, I've got some early CD-based games. I haven't seen any disc rot. Um, I think you've got some very early disc-based games. You've probably got some even earlier disc-based mm, games. I have got some C some CDs which questionably have rotted. Okay, so you're kind of on the verge. I don't know verge. why that's happened. So this physical media, there's a chance that it could be destroyed. So actually the preservation of these games, ROMs are necessary. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're talking uh, about the old microcomputer days where most um, physical media was on cassettes. Yeah. They're really prone to rot. Yeah, like, I've got loads of those what don't work. So. yeah. yeah. That proves it, well, how important it is. Um, I had another important point. I can't remember what it was, so let's go over to the comment section for a moment, see if anyone's... Okay, no worries. Uh, we have um, Paul MK says, uh, I have a lot of emulated games. That Yeah, I lots of people do. back a bit for everything. Yeah, obviously. I will. Um, uh, Lion Secret says, key points would be made earlier in. Disc rot is way overhyped, though. Definitely. They either have to be really terrible CDs to begin the with thing or is, badly all of, looked after. Yeah, all of these collectors and sellers um, pretty much need to come up with reasons to justify their existences. So they make up, they not so much make up, but they exaggerate things like disc rot yeah. in order to, say, get away with their habits, same as alcoholics. Yeah, 100%. Um, Mad Science News says, uh, depends how you attribute damage to piracy. Publish, uh, publishers introducing stupid DRM um, or doing other stupid things because they think it helps piracy only happens because of piracy. So there's a point there made. Um, that was Mad Scientist Junior. Um, Zen Zero says it only impacts um, eBay sellers. Pretty much, that's what you were saying. And collectors. Yeah. Um, Dan from Slopes Game Room says, retro piracy is 100% important. I am literally working out how to tag my Xbox 360 because one of the games in the upcoming videos... Uh, because you can no longer get it. Yeah, it's... Sorry, I, that, uh, my words fumbled, but... <laughs> it's still a fumble. So, how to hack the Xbox 360 because um, one of the other games he's using, one of his other videos, you can no longer get. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's another good thing. So, impossible. Well, most of these Japanese Saturn games, um, the only way you could get them previously was bloody important from Japan. And there's a yeah. ridiculous amount of YouTube influencers out there who are encouraging people to do that which is outrageous yeah like spending all that money on tariffs and stuff like that is just completely unnecessary yeah uh, again Dan from Plays Games says uh, some of the best download only games are no longer available piracy is 100% needed it Scott is. Pilgrim yeah Scott Pilgrim do you want to, yeah you know a bit more about this than well, I do they took, it that, they took that down didn't they even though it was arguably a, it's a really popular game I think yeah. it was a copyright issue but the, the licensing agreement had, had gone so they couldn't do it anymore and yeah just... WiiWare's all gone now the, the Wii Marketplace is shut down so you, the, that, none of that is accessible anymore yeah it's important to let people do, do them for free with, especially with, if it's there yeah, there needs to be basically new laws made legalising a lot of piracy like stuff needs to expire particularly in the field of gaming a lot yeah. quicker because with gaming the technology moves along so fast that the old games become dated rapidly mm -hmm. and not really a commercial viable thing to carry on yeah. selling yeah I think that's fair um, Metal Jesus recent Hidden Gems PS2 video was funny as most of the gems looked like really bad games from Matt Lynch uh, I haven't seen it I'll be honest, I haven't seen it. Um, but if you are that disgusted with it, why are you still watching? Yeah. People have stopped watching us because they're disgusted with us. <laughs> <laughs> why won't you do that to Metal Jesus? He's still going strong. Why, why are these things happening to us? 
Um, what else have we got? We have... Uh, Ryoka-chan says, I used to be able to buy somewhat old games last gen, but now because of people buying up games they will, um, they will never play, I am having to pay 30 to £40 pounds per Wii game. A good yeah. Wii game at least. You've got this strange new generation of collectors as well who only get into the hobby and buy nothing but really expensive games as if it gives them some sort of dopamine release by spending as much as possible on a game just to say they've got, I own just this game. So their collection just consists of like six or seven really expensive mm-hmm. games. So yeah. they're, they're, they're collecting stuff just because it's worth money. Like it's hot. Yeah, which really damages um, the value of gaming and the, the game industry, blah, blah, blah. You just made an interesting point. What? You said like it's art. Yeah. It's very strange because... With stuff like that, it dry like that principle drives the art world and the art community. Mm-hmm. Worthiness and how much something is worth. It's a, it's weird how that doesn't translate across the games as well. Do you not think? Yeah, it's just too I new an entertainment it's medium as well. It's too new and it's bulk. Mm. Art is a single piece. Yes, you can have a re- you can have a reprint. You can have a reproduction can't have the original there's no original game like do you know what I mean um, there would have mm. to be it would be the equivalent of like what Wu-Tang Clan did with their album that they sold for two million dollars to yeah. like Martin Schrader and it's like there was one copy of it you own that one copy of it you yep. can do whatever you want with it yeah. you can release it but it has to be for free or you, you can't release it for like a hundred years there is a collector's market on prototypes though which is similar-ish yeah, mm, yeah, but then that's just a prototype. It, that's what I mean. And there's sometimes there's several copies of yeah. that prototype. And sometimes, and just pointing this out as well, with art, prints can be worth money. Yeah, so print, some print people print, will yeah. make something and then print something off, what? and then they'll sell a thousand prints, for example. Thing is, yeah, all, so would that be like limited run games? But technically, all these yeah. games are prints, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if there's it's a market for stuff like that, and it's produced as a set of a thousand, as a first printing. Because this is something that happens. Um, I can't think of any artists off the top of my head, but it does happen. Limited run games would be that niche, wouldn't it? What is like a different note? Have we got a lower live view account tonight, or is it this app is slow and doesn't give us? A it good... could be both. It, sometimes last it, time it was completely wrong, sometimes it, it? it gets a bit sketchy. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, uh, let's have a look. What else is going? Um, Grand perspective DLC. Does anyone here think it's not a rip off? I sometimes don't. it is, sometimes it isn't. Yeah, it varies game by game, I think. Um, I mean, if you've got an absolutely huge game and you pay, you know, most games are coming out now for 40 or £50. Pounds. Um, if you look at inflation, the amount of cost that's gone up in developing games and stuff like that, 40 or £50 pounds for a whole game isn't too bad. It gives you an opportunity to try the game without shelling out what should be its now current regular retail price of, you know, maybe 80 or £100. Pounds. So it does save some money that way because you get to try the game and if you like it and you like it that much and you think, well, actually, it is worth a bit more and I'll put some more money into it. Um, other than that, DLC can be a bit of a rip-off. Mm-hmm. If you get half a game and then you have to buy the other half, then I think that's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Did, did, what was it they did down uh, Deus Ex? Yeah. On the 360. Yeah. they did. That was massively like that. I never played it, but apparently... Like, the DLC that they released, you could just instantly tell it was just cut from the middle of the game. <laughs> like, it's straight away, just straight cut from the middle of the game, and the story in the game felt like there was something, a piece missing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's because they just took it out. Did Final Fantasy fifteen basically did that as well, I think. So I no, know. I think Final Fantasy fifteen had a fully-fledged story, but then they always had this idea of actually we're going to tell each individual person's story more. But you I, could I'm say, not, yeah, they could put that in the I'm game, enough, but then that yeah. would have to be a £100 game, like Street yeah. said. Whereas, and that's a hard sell. Yeah, I'm not even afraid, but no matter how good of a game was, no, like almost nobody would go out and spend a hundred quid on a base game. Collectors do regularly, yeah. and that's why they damage the industry. That's that the be point. Spent on, they be spending that big money on new games. There we go. That's full circle. <laughs> I feel like we've brought it back round again. Yeah, that's, that, that let's move well. on through the comments. Cause yeah, okay. A few more comments. Time. Um, Expansions are often good, but uh, some DLC is an absolute rip-off from Mad Scientist Junior. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we just said, which is nice. People sharing our opinions. 
Um, Mazda Jr. asks a question to specifically to you. Me, um, yes. Yeah, does Top Hat Game Man have a problem with buying retro games that are roughly £10? Not cheap, considering their age, but not extortionate if they are timeless. Well, I would have, well, no, because that's reasonable. You're not really taking a huge chunk. Depends on the money. game. You're not taking huge money out of the gaming industry, and um, it's not a ludicrous amount of money to spend. You're not damaging yourself. It's, it's harmless, isn't it? Depends on what it's for. Yeah. I mean, um, I once because I desperately wanted to take something home from a convention. For a bit of a laugh, me and you went to Play Expo, and uh, I walked home with a copy of Space Invaders for the, t- the Atari 2600s for £5. Just the cartridge. Yeah, I think it's worth about 50p. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, disgusting. It's all relative, isn't it? Yeah, so as you're talking about these scummy resellers, that's exactly the point, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's a ridiculous inflation. It is. Um, and at the moment, but... my, my wife is trying to sell her car on eBay, and you've got all these idiots offering... Um, like half it's worth yeah so literally and when you go through their accounts you can see their used car salesmen so they're just trying ah, to yeah, yeah. but the, 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 like art with retro video game collecting things are only worth what the market will pay yes so if people are paying £400 for a copy of a game yeah then the game's worth £400 but that's where I was going back earlier to the perpetuated um, mutually beneficial Myths um, presented by collectors and sellers. They've both decided that we want this a game to be worth this much, so they just bounce it back off each other and inflate the prices. Yeah, and, uh, and that's why it's important for like collectors like me, who have been collecting for years, to step up to the plate to say no, no more. This is stupid. Yeah. We need to work together, us people who are um, genuinely passionate about games, and flush these ridiculous values down the toilet. Yeah, I do want to point out as well, just as a little bit of buyer's um, buyer beware kind of thing, just a bit of information for people. Um, I don't know whether you've ever come across this or maybe even noticed it when you try to buy retro game merchandise on eBay. Um, if you have a look, how do you generally find out how much a game is going for? You um, go on the sold listings, yeah, you right? Yeah, you check the, you the, sold, the sold listings, yeah. So you see how much a game's going for, yeah. maybe, the, you know... But what I found is I went to buy a game um, a couple of months ago and I was like, that seems like a lot of money for the game that I wanted to buy. But it had sold for that amount and I was like, that's crazy. When I started having a look, the same person had sold the same game back and forth three or four times on the same account. He'd bought the game at a buy it now at an inflated price to make it look like it was being it was more expensive than it was and then tried to sell it to me. Yeah, Please be careful nonsense. and do your research and look at where these sold listings have come from because yeah, like you said, can get all, mugged off really easily. It's all make-believe and ridiculous. Like, yeah. That's just yeah. capitalism in general, to be honest. And it's only because I decided that I was going to be really, really tight about this particular purchase. Because purchase. I've been mugged off before. Uh, I was the only one out of the three of us that bought a PlayStation Classic at retail. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop making me feel bad. Oh. Um, yeah, That's I have so been good. mugged up before. This particular moment, I decided to be tight and realise that this is a practice that actively happens. Should we go through the comments one more time? before? One more time. I'll see if there's anything particularly interesting. Oh. How much did you pay for that PlayStation Classic? £90. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. You're, in te- you're just making me feel bad now. You're doing it on purpose. Um, you did it to yourself. People talking about sealed game collectors. Oh, that's a whole new can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw something that would have made you so angry the other day. Um, it was put up by a company called Anstream on Facebook. And um, they were celebrating this cool picture of a sealed Mario Brothers oh, for the NES. Right, the right? But it's a PSA graded 9.5, yeah. like fresh out the factory thing that sold for... And oh, was it a hundred and something thousand dollars? I've not looked into dollars. it properly, but again, that's some sort like, of scam. Apparently, it was bought by yeah. a group of people to again force up a fake value to try and sell it on. Again, it's all it's all a scam. All of this retro gaming is a scam. Yeah, which is why I don't want to buy into it any further because ridiculous. I'm contributing to this pyramid scheme scam. Yeah, but lots of people. So we've got a few people talking about sealed games now. Um, I mean, if you haven't seen our channel before, especially on the Twitch streams, if we have a particularly good day, um, occasionally we will find something on these masses of shelves. Um, full of games that is actually sealed where yeah, you've bought some stuff and we open it to reduce its value and essentially <laughs> screw people. Yes, yeah. one day. It's, 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 it's part of our fun. So, um, yeah, I think we're pretty much done. Do you want to do an outro for this? Yes, with, um, with me, 
um, basically trying to sabotage retro game collecting. Yes. Is it is it a little bit like um, the man who gets out, kicked out of the country club, so wants to burn it down? Uh, I think it's a little bit more. I think it's a little bit worse than that. I think it's worse. Yeah, I think you're you've burnt down the country club and then got kicked out. That's essentially what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you got kicked out for burning it. Because essentially, you're trying to make all of these things that you have here worthless at a time when you don't actually want to buy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're the seller in this market, yeah. in theory. You're an anarchist, and you're just there's no denying that. To be yeah, honest. you're like actively shooting yourself in the foot. Mm, it's for the greater good. I want to be a martyr. <laughs> I hope somebody clips that and uses <laughs> that in You're some chaotic. ridiculous video. In D&D, you'd be chaotic evil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no doubt. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, speaking of these, can you pass them back to me for a moment? These beautiful pirate English fan translations of Sega Saturn games. Um, we're going to be playing Sega Saturn tonight over on twitch.tv slash top patch ad all night. I've burnt off about a hundred um, Sega Saturn bought, games. You've bought all these games. Yes. Um, from Tesco's um, in a Maxwell case uh, yes. for 20 pence a pop. I've bought them all. And we're going to be playing many of them on twitch.tv slash chat tonight. So if you want to recommend over there any particular games for us to play, we'll see if we've got them and give it a go. If not, I will pop to the shops and make a purchase on any games I've not got tonight as well. Sound good? Yeah, there we go. Mm. Yes. Brilliant. So, we will see you over on Twitch. Cheerio!